Hi, and welcome to another training demo by SQL Server 2008 Tutorial.com. Today we are going to cover managing indexes in SQL Server 2008. So uh, looking uh, at the agenda, we are going to start off by asking the question, why even use indexes in a database? Next, we will look at clustered and non-clustered indexes. We will follow that up with a demo. And then finally, we will look at uh, two different methods of doing index management. One is to rebuild an index with the ultra index command, and the other one is to reorg an index with ultra index command. So a few things we are going to cover. Um, so uh, why even use indexes in a database? Well, they are necessary to help you speed up search the search queries that you are doing. Um, getting data into uh, a database is just part of the battle. Uh, after that, all the end users and your customers will be uh, pulling up the data and they would want to uh, have that done rather quickly. So that's where the indexes come in. An index in a database is really similar to an index in a book. So if you are reading a book uh, and you are trying to find a certain chapter or a certain term, uh, in, instead of uh, going through the whole book, you can simply go to the index, which will um, point you in the right direction. That's pretty much the concept of an index. It's, uh, it's going to retrieve the information from a database table in a faster manner than you would by going through the whole table. Now, the one drawback uh, that you will have with an index is that, you know, the increase in the database space. And essentially, uh, why that is, is that after you create an index, it uh, creates a new structure, almost like a table, but it's an index table. So, you know, if you have an index on a table or a bunch of indexes on a table, then you will definitely have uh, the increase in space. Uh, another issue is that, uh, you know, your search queries may be faster, but then uh, the drawback is that you will have uh, slower insert and update statements. And the reason for that is as the new data is coming into your table, uh, the index table has to be updated also. So this is why, you know, it will, there's a fine balance between having too many indexes in a table and not, a, not having any. Um, regarding the different types of indexes in SQL Server, uh, there are two major types. One is a clustered index and the other one is a non-clustered index. So as far as the clustered index, uh, you know, in this one, the logic, uh, logical order of the index really matches the underlying physical order of the table rows. So uh, let's say that you have a customer table with, uh, you know, customer ID as, as the primary key. If you were to use that as a clustered index, uh, it will actually go ahead and sort the data by that field. So uh, the clustered index really, if you think of it, matches, you know, the sorted order um, of a table by that field that you're using. Uh, as, uh, you know, because of this reason, you can certain, uh, only have one clustered index per table. So you cannot, uh, you know, obviously sort it, you know, multiple ways. You can only pick one field. Uh, if you will go with a customer ID, that's what it will be sorted by. If you go by a last name, uh, you know, it will choose that field. As for its clustered indexes, they are generally faster than non-clustered indexes, uh, and they make good candidates for fields that are heavily used in the where clause, and also fields that are used in uh, order by, or also in some type of range. So you may say, uh, I don't know, let's say you're looking at orders table, and you may say something like select everything from the orders table where the order date is greater than, and order date is less than. So that would be considered a range and that would be a, uh, definitely a good candidate for a clustered index. As for as non-clustered indexes, instead of sorting the complete table, we are simply uh, using pointers in this and uh, the you know they point to the underlying data and that's how you essentially uh, fetch the data. Uh, as a result of the pointers, you can have many non-clustered indexes in a table. I believe the uh, you can have up to 255 or some uh, some you know big number like that, but obviously that's not recommended. Um, non-clustered indexes are generally slower than clustered indexes, and also uh, as far as what what are some good candidates, it would be anything that's a discrete data uh, that would be. Um, it would make sense to make a non-clustered index on that and also anything 
to do with non-range values. So enough uh, discussion on this. We are going to uh, switch over to Management Studio and do a demo on this. So for my demo, I am doing uh, two things. I have a uh, essentially a Management Studio running here. Uh, and we essentially have uh, this database Kashi and then we uh, created different uh, versions of the same table. Uh, if you look at um, the base table, I'm, I'm actually going to do a simple count on this. You know, we have about 157,000 rows. So it's not a huge table, but it's definitely enough to make a difference, uh, you know, in our analysis. And the other thing I'm running is uh, um, SQL Profiler, and this is going to give us uh, some uh, concrete information. And you know, as we are running different queries, we will come back and look at some of these columns. The one we're really interested in are the number of reads that uh, the query will do, and the number of reads is essentially uh, the underlying data pages that it has to gather, and also we will be looking at duration, which is the amount of uh, time it takes to process the query. So we will switch back to uh, Management Studio, and I will uh, basically start pulling, um, the, you know, the some of the scripts that I put together. So let me pull up this no index one, uh, and let me walk you uh, quickly through this. Um, basically, these two commands, what they do is they let you test queries with a clean memory buffer. So anytime you're running queries, uh, you know, SQL Server holds some information in the buffer cache, and this way we are clearing that completely and also um, down here we are setting some of the statistics uh, information um, setting these two on and off okay and here is essentially I want one more thing we need to turn on is the actual execution plan so for that what I need to do is click here and this will uh, turn on the uh, execution plan and as far as the table um, before I run this I want to show you that there are no indexes in here Okay, and um, our select query is uh, a simple select from this table where the last name is Smith. Okay, so I think at this point we are ready to run it. So before I do that, I'm going to switch to my profiler and see there's no activity in here, so that's good. And uh, let's go ahead and execute this part. So this will go ahead and pull uh, any of the customers you know that have the last name Smith and looks like we are pulling 206 rows okay um, now before I switch over to profiler uh, if you look at your execution plan uh, you can see that it did a table scan which is definitely not the way to pull data from SQL Server you want to be doing either an index seek or an index scan uh, table scan what that really means is that it had to go through the whole table uh, to pull uh, this information, okay? And then if you right click on it, uh, there's a lot of information in here um, on the actual um, execution, okay? We, and uh, another thing I wanted to point out in, is under messages, because we use these uh, stats um, commands, you can definitely go down and see, you know, some of the information like the number of logical reads it did, physical reads, and also the amount of time uh, it took uh, you know to process that query we are actually going to pull some of these numbers from um, profiler so let's let's take a look at this as far as the number of reads and I'm going to write these down which is 5248 in this case so I'll just say reads um, 5248 in here and then as far as duration that is 1396 and that's in milliseconds so it took basically 1.3 uh, almost 1.4 seconds to process this okay and actually I'm what I'm going to do is sort of put this in the comments section and I will copy this part so I can use it in the next table uh, but that's not bad I mean it took 1.4 second to pull this information now we are going to uh, pull up the next query which is going to be using a clustered in